I love Studio Ghibli style, but I didn't want to paint another version of Arietti or Totoro or whatever, because you can't find a ton of the same stills from the movies. I wanted to be something that was really mine. And for this, I've been using AI. I know it's a bit controversial, but I strongly believe that artists should use what they have available around them. And I've been talking about artificial intelligence in another video that I link here, so you can see what I think about it. For this painting today, I have typed a prompt to the AI asking for house in the trees in the Ghibli style. And it came up with different images and I had to choose. I've been asking you which one you prefer and this is the one you chose. So let's go for it. And I plan to make a Christmas gift with this. So I decided to paint on a cardboard with canvas paper on it. I know it can be a bit tricky to paint this kind of gouache on canvas, but okay, let's go for it. The first thing is to get the drawing done on the canvas. And I want to be inspired by the image. I don't want to stick to it. So I'm already taking some freedom from the reference image because I felt that the house was a bit too small and I wanted it to be the focal point of the painting. So I'm just going for it and enlarge the house. Just for the record, I'm standing while doing this and holding my pencil from far away because I don't want to go into details. I want the rough, rough sketch that I will erase and refine on top of it later. This is how I work and I can also be disturbed by all the graphite on the canvas, especially on canvas, the graphite tends to be a bit darker than on regular paper. So it's good to remove the excess graphite with a needable eraser before applying the paint. I think it would be really too expensive to make all the background with gouache and I'm going for acrylic. So this is just regular acrylic, the basic one, the cheapest one you can get. It doesn't really matter. I'm making a mix with white, cerulean blue and a tiny bit of Prussian blue just to tone down this baby blue that is really not what I like. And then making a gradient. And did you see my fancy green stuff on the right of the canvas? Ah, let me know in comments if you want me to explain what it is. I'm applying a very thin layer of acrylic because I still want to be able to see my drawing under it. It's really thin. It's so thin that I have to push the paint on the canvas. I made a small gradient in the background because it was a bit boring to have this plain blue sky. And now going for the gouache, I'm using a soft brush, kind of rounded edges. It's flat but rounded. And then I mix a light, very, very light blue-gray, just to give some interest to the clouds because clouds are not plain white or they would be boring. So let's go for it and place a bit randomly using the reference image as a guide but not as a copy. So just filling wherever I think it is more white, more grayish, more bluish. You want to vary your colors and rub the edge of the brush to get the rounded shape. For the foliage, I'm going with a flat brush, a small one that is a bit damaged because I want to have um, a bit of texture on the outer side of the foliage. And you can learn more on this technique on the video that I link above. It's a part of my Filio Gouache sketchbook workshop with the textures. I'm varying the greens just to convey the shadow and the light. So you want to go with darker, lighter, warmer color, just to give interest to the foliage, including some white because you haven't cleaned your brush very well, but that's fine. Moving to the house. And while I have this dark green, I'm switching back to my large round brush from the clouds to make the shadows under the tree. Yeah, yeah, let's say it's a tree. And I've placed a brown paint on the side of the house, but it was a mistake. I will fix that in a minute. 
Now I completely mixed up two reference images. You voted for this one and this is the one I wanted to do as well. But then when I was going back to my painting, I mixed with the second one. So in the end, it's a mix of both, but that's fine. I was not aiming to copy exactly anyway, so let's go for it. I thought it would be wise to make the house before the foliage. Um, yeah, it was a good idea, but <laughs> as I said, I mixed two reference images. So it's me just making the roof, thinking this is the first house. And then I come down, I go to the windows and I look at the pillars and I say, whoa, 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 what's going on? And decided to just make the second house in the first background. I think one of the great skills we have as artists is we are able to adapt and to do something from a mistake. So this is me just painting the windows. It's a mix of the blue from the sky, which is uh, in gouache this time, with a bit of grayish because it's not supposed to be as light as the sky itself. And struggling a bit with adding details. Um, Going back to the foliage and thinking that this baby green is not really what I like, so I will have to cover it again. When you're painting architecture, you need to add details with a very, very fine brush. It gives uh, more dimension to your painting, otherwise it would look a bit too naive. And also you have to think that Ghibli style is very detailed. So I could have been a bit further with my details, but I'm fine the way it is. And I'm going back to the foliage and here, I don't know if you can tell, but my painting is too thin. You can see the blue of the sky under it. I need to load my brush with more paint to get something thicker. Because if you want to merge a bit the edges between the foliage, you won't be able to do it if you don't have enough paint to do. Choosing the color for the trunk is a bit tricky because you need to show the light and dark part of it, but also you want the branches to be still visible on the dark foliage under the house. So I've been changing a bit my mind. And to give a more uh, organic look to my branches, I'm using the edge of the flat brush with a bit of extra fuss around it so it's not too stiff. Under the tree, I'm changing the color. It was a brown and I'm adding a light bluish grayish something just to show the reflection of the sky. I think it gives more dimension to the foliage. And adding, oops, having my brush falling. Ooh. But not a problem. Just remove it with a clean towel and you're good to go. In the reference image, um, the hole in the trunk is supposed to be a door or a window. And I have reserved a bit of the background visible, but I want it to be an opening. So I'm adding a bit of shadow to show that it's a hole in the trunk, actually. And now using my new favorite brush. I don't know if you've been seeing this on Instagram, but this is a brush I bought from Pinceau Léona, which is a French brand. And in French, the, the name is so cute. It would translate like petticoat brush. But actually, I've been asking everyone here and there on Instagram, and the correct name would be a liner reservoir. You have a very, very thin, um, hair and around it you have a large reservoir to hold the paint while you are painting and it's really great because you can make long thin lines without filling your brush again. Oops, forgot the little trunk on the right. So adding it and using a rough paint and sometimes I like to let the canvas a bit visible under the painting and not fill every bump and gap in the canvas. And now using another fancy brush, I know I've been playing a lot with brushes recently and making some little dots here and there to show the individual leaves. But I find this a bit tedious, so I'm not doing much of it. 
I'm more into the impression of the foliage, not into the detail. And final touch, a bit of titanium white, which is the whitest white you can get. So you need to have a pure clean water to dip your brush inside and rubbing here and there on the mostly part of the clouds. And you will see in a minute, it really makes the clouds popping out and very, very strong against the blue background. And I think it helps everything. And now that I'm looking at the painting, I see that the light green in the middle of the painting between the two windows, it's not the good color. So I have to fix this. Let me fix it and be back. So I was just going to fix the green, but now that I look at it, I see that the bottom part of the house wasn't wide enough. So I'm just adding a bit more paint to enlarge it. And then I can fix this baby green that is ugh, adding a bit of warm yellow in my existing mix and adding some lighter color here and there. This is something I do every time. I have to fix the values at the very end when everything is in place. And while I have this color on my brush, let's place it on the tree on the right, which is supposed to be facing the sun. And here we are. I think I like it. And I want your advice. Do you think this is really a Ghibli style or not? And do you paint with gouache on canvas? because it's really cool to do and it gives nice effects. Thanks for watching and see you next week. Au revoir.